good evening hello good evening if you're watching us from this part of the world nigeria good afternoon hello good evening good afternoon or good morning depending on your time zone you're welcome to another episode of galvation um it's an amazing conversation today because tomorrow is father's day and unlike mother's day we have just one father's day in a year and i think it should count for something so this evening we're going to be having a very important conversation with a father we're going to have a father we're going to interview a father today and it's going to be very very interactive i can assure you it's going to be educative i can assure you it's going to be impactful so whether you are a lady listening to me now or you are a man this conversation is important ladies gentlemen fathers mothers fathers to be mothers to be brothers sisters everybody is going to have something to gain because this conversation is going to be affecting every one of us because we relate with men in one way or the other uh it's amazing that uh we'll just have about an hour for this and i can show i can assure it's going to be value packed so please if you know somebody who is supposed to be here kindly do send them this link send your reminders out now and let us kick the ground running okay um our guest is already here and uh, ready to join us i'm not going to be doing this conversation alone i'm going to be having this conversation with fumi we're going to be co-hosting so fumi should uh fumi should join us soonest um but before fumi joins us i'm going to be our speaker very soon but before um fumi joins us and our speaker joins us i think we should say a word of prayer let's uh commit today's conversation conversation to god's hands so that he would stare it by his spirit and give us the best we can get out of it i am so sure and if you listen well enough if you have an open mind today your life will not remain the same again if you got questions about the male folk it's a great time to stick around because you'll be permitted to ask your questions in the comments all right um and dear father we thank you for today we thank you for the opportunity to speak with everyone who's going to join this or listen to it later about the male folk and how you love us to relate with them and how you love them to live their lives to please you and to better their society and families we thank you because the spirit, your spirit will steer this conversation to the direction it must go so that we'll get maximum benefits and our lives will be better off for it in jesus mighty name we are prayed amen uh, joining us today also is uh, co-hosting with me today also is a uh, for me for me is a hr expert uh she's a professional in her field with a lot of experience and um i'm very sure it will be an amazing amazing time um for me will be joining us in a bit and also color the aki our guest um okay i'm be trying to accept the request apologies i think he stayed for long so um can you see my own request oh fantastic oh for me yeah great great thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> all right um so i'll be inviting our guest apostle Kolabiaki. um Oh, the thing is unable to join. I don't know why. I'll invite him. That challenge as well when I try joining. Just introduce him uh, briefly. <laughs> Our guest tonight, Apostle Koladiaki, is the current mission director. Hey, he's here already. You're welcome. God bless you. <laughs> God bless. Have you yes, he's the current mission director in Europe of the Charismatic Renewal Ministries. 
Incorporated, having served as a national overseer of the same charismatic renewal ministries in the UK for 16 years. He's truly an apostle. Take it. Uh, together with his wife, Pastor Nke Chiaki, they serve as global director of finance, international ministers for fellowship, he has a passion to reach young people and is one of the directors of Treasured City, CIC, which runs in Alesbury Youth Hub. He's an educationist and mentor to young people. He's an author of eight books and several life-transforming articles. You should follow him, especially on Facebook, where he's very active. He's the CEO of Treasured Personnel Limited, a company that focuses on supporting teachers and those taking admission into higher education in the UK. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome Apostle Kola Diakin. Together with his wife, they run the Marriage Preparation and Enhancement Class, a five-week program for marital matters. So if you're single, even if you're married and you need uh, some touch-up counsel, Apostle Claudia King is here for he's a selfless man of God. And I'm so honored to have him grace this occasion because it was a very short notice. But because of the heart he has for God and God's people, he decided to come. You're welcome, sir. Daddy, we are glad to have you. Thank you so, 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 so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you for me. Thank you. Thank you. It's an Thank honor you. to be here. You know, when, when I got the invite, I said, wow, uh, my schedule is so, so tight. But Josie cannot invite me, and I will, I will, I will, I will refuse that request. But we really bless God. Thank you so, so, so much. I'm so grateful. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I'm glad to have you. Okay, so without much ado, because we have to a lot of things to discuss this evening, we're gonna dive right in. So I'm gonna be welcoming our guest to give us an opening word uh, on fatherhood and being a father. I mean. So you're free to take it from any angle, maybe from the pressure, from the home, society, yes. any angle. Let him give us an opening remark on that so that we have a baseline to ask questions and have a fruitful conversation. If you're joining, please don't join alone. Tag someone along. You can't, you can't just learn alone. Please don't be selfish. Thank you. All right, sir, over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Josephine. And I want to really bless God for this season. You know, you made a statement. You said there's about... Yeah, I don't know how many Mother's Day we have. <laughs> Maybe about 10 different. So we have the Australian one, the Canadian one, the US, the UK, Nigeria. I don't know how many. <laughs> more, more importantly, we have one Father's Day. And even that one Father's Day, many times we forget the one Father's Day. It's not because, mm. I believe it's not because people want to deliberately forget it. It's just because men are mm -hmm. too big doing so many things. And somehow they get forgotten. But today we want to talk about fatherhood because when we talk about fatherhood, fatherhood is not just because you are male. Fatherhood is responsibility. A lot of people don't understand that what that means. People think, oh, if, if I can, if I once I have a wife and I have children, I'm a father. Or especially when you have children, you're a father. Fatherhood goes way beyond that. And I want to qualify it. When we talk about fatherhood, let me break it down because we live in a society where things have been modeled up. We're talking about a male person, somebody who has the XY chromosome. I had to go and check the biology of that. You know, I'm a mathematician. So it's XY chromosome. If you don't have an XY chromosome, sorry, we're not talking not to you here. Father. We're talking mm -hmm. to <laughs> male with the XY chromosome. So and when we talk about that, we, we, there's so many things that we need to look at. There are women who are carrying the burden of fathers. It's, still mm. not mm. father. it's because of a broken system, a broken situation that has caused them to carry those burdens. The Lord will reward them for doing that, but it does not change the fact that there is someone who is supposed to stand in that gap. There are people who've lost their mm -hmm. husbands, who've lost their husbands, or who have husbands who walked out, and they have to mm. carry those burdens. It does not make them fathers. They are mothers who are just standing in the gap. For that but today we won't talk about fathers you see there, there, there are many people who are male who are men who are not fathers because they mm -hmm. don't understand the responsibility of being a father and um, i believe that mm -hmm. when we look at scriptures because i want to look at father but I, I said something here i said fatherhood is about a male adult adult providing direction cover and protection for the family and the land 
it's not just the family, the family and the land, because if you provide pro uh, direction, protection, and cover, you know, even for your own family, you are providing it for the land. When, they, when that is broken, then everything messes up. You know, in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 23, there's something that the scripture tells us. It says, her husband is known in the gates when he's seated among the elders of the land. That is a father. A man that sits at the gate. A man that sits at the place of authority. A man that sits where decision-making to be to make the land to make the nation to make the society a better place not the ones who who, who pillage the, the society you know somebody can sit at the gate and instead of providing protection he's breaking down the walls pulling down the structure that's supposed to protect the next generation that one is not mm. a father he can be wearing a suit and having a tie he can wear an agbada or whatever he's wearing and looks like he's got a, a, a male chromosome. He's not a father. He's a wicked human mm. being, not a father. So we're talking about people who understand that responsibility. So you know, he provides direction for his family. He mm -hmm. provides, no, no, no. In Malachi chapter two, he says something. He says, the law of truth is in his mouth and iniquity mm -hmm. was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did not turn many away you know, he didn't talk, he didn't turn, he, he was talking about, he said he didn't turn many away from iniquity. That was the opposite. This one would turn many away from iniquity. For the priest lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he's the messenger of the Lord of hosts. That is a father. A man whose lips ooze the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Somebody who brings wisdom to his children. He raises his children. If you look at the Bible in Genesis chapter 14, talks about, uh, about Abraham. The Bible says that he raised 400 people. Your younger, he, he raised a company, is it 318 or thereabouts, in his household who could go to battle at a moment's notice. He had raised them, he had trained them. That is a father. A man who <laughs> raises people, who in his household, anybody that comes in contact with him, he raises them to be vessels that God can use. That is a father. So that whether they are his, whether they are his biological children or his spiritual children, he stands mm. as cover for them. He stands as a protection for them. He stands in a place where he gives wisdom to them. He raises a company of men that can stand at the gate against the enemy. So he's not just looking at, oh, I have mm. a son. So you don't need to have a son. A father raises vessels. So whether it is male or female. So you see, a proper father doesn't look and say, oh, God, he didn't give me a, a son. That is a foolish man. A, a, a man mm. of wisdom sees whatever God releases to him as tools in the hand of God that God wants to raise as threshing instruments to make an impact in a generation. So he would be like, like Philip, whom God gave daughters and he raised them as prophetic vessels. He, right. he would be, he would be, he would be a, a, a man that would raise a, a son like Josiah, that at the age of eight could rule over a nation. That is a father. Look at the father. Josiah's father died, but he had infused so much no, 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 understanding to the mother that when they were recording him, they said Josiah, they recorded the name of the mother. Because she had done her job. Why? Because the father gave her leverage to do the business. That is the father who had given. He didn't just say, he didn't die and life died with the son. No. Life mm. continued. Value increased even with his death. That is the father. That is right. important. So protection is important. It provides cover. And we can see so many men. We can see so many men who are not fathers. Adam mm -hmm. was not a proper father. Why? His wife messed up. He left her out dry. He said, it is not me. It is the woman you gave me. That's not a father. A father yes. will have provided protection. Say, Lord, I stand. My wife messed up, but we did it together. I'm standing here. That is a father. A father who will say his son messes up will not hide. He say, listen, my son messed up. This is what we're going to do. This is how to solve this problem. That is a father. Yes. So it's really, really important. You can see, you, you, you can see Eli. Eli was not a proper father. Why? His sons were messing up and he didn't correct them. That's not the father. He was a man, but he didn't provide the job of protection, security. He did. He was not the one who, he didn't raise them to know truth. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That, that's really Amen. important. So we can see men. Caleb was somebody like that. Caleb in Joshua chapter 14, verse 6. The Bible says, he told them, says, give me this mountain. Do you know that at the age where he was asking for this mountain, there's nothing he could do with the mountain. He couldn't build mm. house. He couldn't do anything. 
he collected it for his for his generation yeah. that is a father yeah. who was not just mm. thinking about himself he was thinking of the generations mm. to come he says i am possessing this land and you know that it was from hebron that david that david ruled that is the city of David. Why? Because he knew that there was something that he needed to collect. He didn't know David was coming. He didn't know that was what God, where was where we were going to David was going to rule from. But he knew that right. this was something I had to possess. I'm not leaving it to somebody else. I must finish the business myself. Mm -hmm. So he said, as I was as I was <laughs> when I was 40, so am I now that I'm 85. That is a man. That is a man. Mm. Hallelujah. You can see somebody like Philip that yeah. I noted that I spoke about before. We can see somebody like Noah. When he was going to go into the ark, he carried his whole family with him. He didn't just go by himself. That is a father. Yes. He provided yes. leadership. He said, listen, evil is coming. We are going together. You can see somebody uh, um, 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 even, even but let's look at somebody like Lot. What did Lot mm. do? What did Lot provide? It's, what, it, it's, it's one of my, my, my first book was about Lot, a man that missed it. A man that missed it. A man that gave himself, he entered into a town. Even though they said he's, he was grieved, he entered into a land where his children were already going to marry unbelievers. He was very close. Mm. Before we knew what was happening, he was already inside the land of iniquity, not to change them. He became a citizen like of the them. land of iniquity. That mm. is the father. Because he put his children in harm's way. That they did not even know that there was a bro an uncle. They said the whole world is finished. There's nobody else. How did they know that there was an uncle called Abraham? To a point where mm. that was why they committed the iniquity. They had stayed too much in Sodom. He had allowed too much leeway that they decided that, listen, what can we do? Let's do something abominable. Look at the result mm. of, of his lack of leadership. It has produced a thorn in the flesh of his grand of, of, of the of the children of Abraham till today. When you hear the war, all the wars that are happening in those areas in the Middle East is as a result of what he produced. His production is a major factor in the things that are there. That was not a proper father. So it's important. So today, please. I wrote, I said, there's no discrimination by a father. A father doesn't discriminate. Whether you are male, female, you do well, you do, he, prove, he continues to push to ensure that purpose is fulfilled in your life. So whether your child doesn't do well in an exam, the father doesn't just abandon the child and focus on the one that is doing well. No, he continues. He continues to support, to see that this one fulfills purpose. So whatever the Lord releases into your quiver becomes a vessel you have to nurture to fulfill purpose. That's the father. A father would be a true husband. Let me let me end on that note. A true husband who will love his wife and take care of his home. He will not be a one-way man that is jumping up and down, moving all over the place. He provides support. He is there. He's there to provide wisdom, to, to be the spiritual, to be the priest indeed of the home. That's a father. A father is a priest over the home. Mm. He's a priest. He brings wisdom. He brings the power of God down into his home. That's the first church. So he's a priest over his own before he's yeah. a priest in the church. Mm -hmm. Many men come into the church, they are babbling and shouting in church, but in the home, they are not the priest. They provide no... Mm. They don't. They, the power of God does not come down in their home. If the power of God is not coming down in the home, how can you be talking about the power of God outside? They must see the power of God. They must see mm -hmm. the evidence that what you are seeing out there works in here. And that's what yeah. fatherhood is about. Yeah. It is time yeah. for real fathers to stand up. It's time for the young men as well he, he raises young men that can go forth that you can release into the world and they'll go and do exploits many men are as are, are so messed up that they they, they get into marriage they are, they are they are confused they don't know what to do they've not been raised by fathers mm -hmm. fathers have not taught them to cook they've not taught them to wash they've not taught them to to, to take care of babies i i want to, to thank god for my father my father insisted we had in my house we are eight and there are three boys and we had five women in our house. Even though there were five, my father insisted as the firstborn, I had to go inside the kitchen to learn how to do amala, do everything. It was he insisted. I did not like it, but today I look back, I say that man was a man of wisdom because mm -hmm. it, it, it made my marriage a better marriage. Why? Because when we're raising children, I could do anything. I could do, I, could, I taught my wife how to cook, cook soup, cook everything. Why? Because she came from a different culture, one, and also she had a different mm. ideology.
Today, I can't cook anything like I they are used to now, but she, my wife can cook for the whole of this country. Even if we are having complaints. Why? Because, also, but, you see, if I didn't learn, we would have been in trouble. Yes. At the initial stage. Mm. I could have been fighting her. You can't cook. But that was not the issue. I understood that, listen, she can't do it the way we need to do it. Mm -hmm. As a father, I need to stand. Stand in the gap. I raised my children. I could do anything. Whether it is to remove mucus from anywhere, you understand me. We can do everything. <laughs> All those business, mm. we can do anything. If it is to, is it to clean it, everything. Why? Because my father raised me to see that that is a necessary business. If you love your wife, a father loves his wife to a point that he wants to make life easy for her. Yeah. He wants to make yeah. things easy. So your wife has gone to work. Mm. You are not insisting. A father will see that. Listen, what can I do? What can I do in the house before my wife comes? Mm. Let's let's clean the place. Mm. Let's wash the dishes. So she comes home from work. The burden that she 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 yeah, the, the, the the amount of work she needs Already to make. imagining is reduced. how will she make dinner? How will is she do everything? Is reduced. Yes. Reduced. Right. Cook rice before she comes. All she needs to do is to cook the soup. Some men will say, I, I can't eat soup, uh, uh, soup that is cooked yesterday. Then cook the one for today. Yes, That's I was just going to say that. You cook. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lord will help us. So this fatherhood Amen. is a responsibility. Fatherhood is knowing mm. that, listen, there's something God has graced with. It is to mm -hmm. lead this home. And you must lead in every area. I can go, I wash the, I wash anything. There's nothing that I can't wash. Some of us work in some places where if you, what you are doing out there, if they tell you to do it at home, you say, you don't, don't you know I'm the man, of, one, one brother said, one, I'm, the man, you, you say, I'm the man of the house. I say, you are the man of which house? <laughs> if you are the man of the house, then man up and do the man things. The man thing is that you do all the things that are, that are serious in the house. <laughs> yes, so you can't be the man of the house and you are lazing about, watching TV, watching football. You, you are going to go, going out with the <laughs> You are not a man. You are not a father. Mm -hmm. A father mm -hmm. stays at home. Your home is more important to mm -hmm. you than outside. It's more important yes. to you than being with the boys. The boys are second. Mm -hmm. Your home is primary. Yes. Your home is primary. Very important. Being with your mm -hmm. children is primary. <laughs> be bonding with them is primary. It's 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 important. You must, your children must be able to talk to you. You know, I I I came from a point where I learned very late. I used to think my father was very harsh. It was very hard. Mm -hmm. I tried it. My father, based on the stories I've had, that my father could beat people up when he was young. So I used to think about that. And my father did everything to make sure I could talk to him. If my father wants to buy a car, he doesn't buy it until he asks me, what color do you want? What car do you oh. want? That's oh. But I didn't understand. It took me a long time to understand that I could talk to him. And when I understood that, wow, it became the best thing. If my father would not take any decision in the house, he got to a point. My mother would ask me, Does your father have money? Why? Because he would not even talk to her, he would ask me. He, not that her, he would uh -oh. talk to me. Oh. <laughs> not that my father would not tell her, but she just felt that we had such a bonding. Bond. That if she wanted anything, mm. sometimes she can just Bond. talk to me. Mm. I would call my dad. I say, Oh, this and that. In his business, if he wanted to, he got to a point, if he wants to get a check and they are not giving it to him, he sent me there. I get there, I say, I'm Mr. Aki. Oh, Mr. Akin, they think it's the old Mr. Akin. You will not know that it's me, the young one. They, when I enter, the man will be looking at me. Mr. Akin, I say, yes, it's me. And we had the same initial. I will collect the check, go to the bank, collect the money, and bring it home. And the man will be wondering, say, ah, how did you do it? I I went there. Why? Because he had raised me to be able to do things. Mm. That's a father. Mm. That's a father. He would That's not even tell me to go there. Sometimes he would just say, this guy has not been paying up, and I would just leave from school and go there. And go and represent him, collect the check, go to the bank, collect the money, bring it home. And he'll be in the office. My father might be in the office and be looking, how are we going to solve this matter? And I'll come in, I'll say, I just wow. want to That's a father. Wow. He has raised us in that way. And this is critical. We must be able mm. to do these things. A father goes to mm. school, he goes for parents' evening. Many men don't know what parents' evening looks like. They don't attend parents' <laughs> evening. Some of them don't even know the name of the school. If we let let, let, let me really let me read here. Do a survey of men and ask them what is the name of your son's school? What is mm. the address? Many men, many, many fathers don't know. They say I've given them the money for school. It's not the money. Your children need you mm. to be there. They want to see you at parents. They are ready in the house for yes. they want you to be there. They are playing sports. They want you to be there. They win, mm -hmm. they, they win or they lose. They want you to be there. To say, listen, you did what yes, oh, you didn't win this time around. Don't worry, practice for next year. That's the word of God. That's it, Father. So really, really important. So awesome. I want us to understand it's time for real fathers to stand up and be counted. It's time for young men mm. who are the future to begin to learn what fatherhood is all about and to step 
into it. So it's not only because you marry. You must learn to be a father. You know, the Bible tells us something. It says, for this purpose, it says, for this purpose shall a man leave his father and his mother. Leave. <laughs> and you, leave. you must be a man to leave. Many mm, boys are right. trying to leave. And unfortunately, mm. many confused girls who, because you say, are following boys. <laughs> It says a man will leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife. The girl is not a wife, but she's mm. looking for a husband. And that husband mm. is a man. Two confused people. The boy. A confused mm. boy and a woman who has not been prepared to become a wife. To be a wife. Now mm. meet up together and they say marriage is hard. It's going to be hard. Disaster. It's, it's disaster <laughs> from day one. Because it's not the wedding gown. Wedding is a day program just one day that raises a son <laughs> who is prepared for marriage many men right. are prepared for a wedding they mm, spend so much right. on the wedding, but they are not prepared mm. for marriage and that is where that's problem right. starts. marriage is where you close that door after the after the everybody has said perception and they push you away marriage goes home. and that day you will know whether you were raised or you were not so mm. tonight, I pray mm. that the Lord will help us. The Lord will strengthen us and the Lord will keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Star, for that introductory <laughs> note. You know, we could just sit back and have you to speak all and all until six o'clock. <laughs> but it would be good that we came with questions <laughs> and we'll go back with them. But very very can say that he was very passionate about what he was saying because I mean, things are very different now than they were maybe when he was much younger. And I'm so glad to know about uh, Grandpa's testimony of how he truly trusted and trained you. I think that's really a big deal. For me, I'll let you ask some questions. But before you go, there was a very important point you noted. And it's of concern to me. So I want to bring it up because some women are not, don't even understand their place in the home and, and their husband's place as the fathers. So I, I think I was in a female group and uh, somebody was advising to say that women should stop complaining when their husbands are not leading devotion or practice to pray in the home. That mm. we know the man is the head of the home, but it is not in a man's place to gather the children and the family to pray. That women wake up earlier, they should, you know, gather the children and wake their and wake their husbands later on that taking the initiative for family prayers and family altar should be a woman's thing. And I mean, saying the man is a is the priest of a home. What do you have to say to that? Is this a balanced um, um, idea, or are we saying as a priest it is your responsibility to know about the spiritual well-being of your home, including family devotion and prayer? Amen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for that question. You see, we 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 live in a society where things are moving very very fast, and so many factors come into place. One of the things we must also learn is that, and I encourage people not to let not box ourselves into a corner, mm -hmm. because when you box yourself into a corner, then you get into trouble. We live in a society where things are totally different. Let me give where we are as an example. We live in a society where deep people do different jobs. So, for example, maybe my wife is a nurse. She works night. She's not going to get home until 8. She's not going to finish until 8 in the morning. I'm supposed to resume my own work at 8.30. If we are going to run it the way we are going to run, we are not going to meet if she's going to work at night and she's coming back in the morning. Now, if I have kids at home, it's... it's it's, it's important for us to look at what is the best way possible. You see, sometimes we can be too religious and say it must be morning devotion. I'm not knocking, mm. but if morning devotion does not work for you, what can you do? Mm. Many marriages are in trouble because they say we must have morning devotion. Now, mm. you are having the morning mm. devotion, the children are there and they are hey, morning Jesus. And then the the father is still everybody is not awakened and we are just doing it religiously that we have done morning devotion mm. and in reality mm. there's no spirituality in what we've done can mm. we find mm. a time that is convenient where people will be alert number one and you will add value because the <laughs> devotion is value 
And when value mm. is not into it, it becomes religious and it's it's a it's dead Waste work. Time. It's dead work. Mm. Time. So you might go out and say, ah, in our house, we pray every morning, you know, every day we must pray. But ask them, what exactly did your prayer do? You mm. don't match mm. and nothing has happened. So if it is okay where both of you live together in the morning at the same time, then you can plan around that. But if it is not, let's find a way around it. Let's look at the way that works. Because if you buck yourself, you will, you will guilt trip yourself into trouble. You think, oh, because we didn't do it, maybe God is not with our family. That's why my child uh, had an accident. Why this? No. Listen, you can pray without the whole family being there. And you will stand in the gap for your family if it is mm. not convenient. And when the opportunity comes, you can do the one that will now in encompass everybody together. Yeah. If opportunity makes it such that you are there every day, great, then do it. Now, the aspect of whether the wife or the husband, you see, it is when we begin, people have gotten to a point where, you see, we can, culture can also put us in trouble. They say in our culture, mm -hmm. it is a mm. man that does this. It is a woman that does this. There's no. It is your home. If your home, mm. home is on mm. fire, you will not say, uh -huh, it is the man's job to go and put the fire off. Oof. You would take responsibility and we must take responsibility. So whether it's the husband or the wife, yeah, it's ideal for the husband. That's the ideal. But if the husband is not, look at the, look at the, the, the scripture in, in Judges chapter 4, verse 4. It says, Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidot, she judged Israel. We don't, do you know who Lapidot is? His name appeared mm -hmm. once in the Bible. We don't know him, but mm -hmm. his wife was the judge of Israel. Mm -hmm. Why did the Bible put Lapidot's name in the middle? To show that your home is the middle point of your ministry and your inward relationship with God. The mm -hmm. inward relationship mm -hmm is what created harmony on that bridge if that bridge is on fire deborah cannot do ministry outside there's no ministry mm. forget about if she goes out she's going out with with bond clothes with scratch marks all over herself because of the fight on the bridge fight on the bridge is not necessarily punching it could be different stress things that are not correct so let's let's remember that the law will help us amen let me not go on and on amen okay for me over to you your questions all right, sir. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. All right, so I, I would ask, the first question I'll ask is um, about um, the finances, all right? So in what ways do financial uh, responsibilities add to the pressure, all right, um, of being a father in the home? Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. You. The financial responsibilities, um, it, it adds quite a lot because as a man, you expected to provide the scripture says a man that cannot provide for himself is worse than an infidel and many people mm -hmm. will pick on that scripture and you know hammer the head of the man and things like that it's okay but you see life is in stages there are times when yes. you might be in a system or in a, a situation where it, somehow the wife begins to earn more than the husband now if you're mm -hmm. in the home, one of the things you must you must we must detach ourselves from is the fact that this is my money or this is your money. It's hard to do. It is the money. It's our money. money. It's our, our money. money. But <laughs> it, that our money, that our money too. We need to. Daddy, what of the woman's money? Is it our money or yeah, her money? That, that's what I'm saying. Listen very well. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> our money means our money. If we are joined together as one, so the money is not part of the joining. Money is part of the journey. <laughs> but you see, we can have challenges. And we need to understand it. We need to recognize this. We are different in terms of our understanding of resources, management. Mm -hmm. There are people where it's the man that is the astute one that understands finances. There are mm -hmm. marriages where it is the wife. It's not always the wife. There are women who can, mm -hmm. buy, they, True. They can buy themselves. Not even buy something, buy themselves. Forget that they are buying themselves. <laughs> Why? Because they can buy and buy and buy. Uh -huh. There are women <laughs> like that. You give them money to go to the shop. They will buy, first of all, buy for buy themselves. 
before they now remember that what is the change left. So there are women who can do that. But there are men True. also who can do that. I tell myself, if you come to my marriage seminar, I used to be horrible with finances. I don't know that I can carry a salary and go out and give it out for to somebody else to pay something. And then come home and now begin to look at them. So how are we going to pay rent? That's how I used to be. I was bad financially, but my wife is on this one. Everything, one, two, one, two. My wife can know she's excellent in finances. At the beginning, I didn't understand that because I used to buy everything. So me, I will buy any, the thing that we don't need, the one that we're going to need in 10 years, I buy and bring home. And then she say, what do you need this one for? I say, I just saw it was good. And 10 years, we don't need it. One day we might now need it, but it was not needed. That's me. I was not financially literate. That's the other thing. I was not literate financially. I didn't understand finances. I just felt it comes now, we spend now, then we look towards God for the next one. It was a reckless way. That's it. So, but now you need to understand financial intelligence is critical. Yes. And we need to understand it. If it is not working that way, because sometimes you can put it in the same pot and the thing begins to disappear. Somebody mm. will offend it. Mm. So if it is the mm. case like that, you need to now find a way to say, listen, uh, this thing, if we follow this way, this is where we are going to end. Though. Let's find mm -hmm. a different system to work it out. But it must be mm. with understanding. And it is a man must recognize, if you are the one that cannot do it, recognize it and take your hand off it. If it is the wife that cannot do it, recognize and they don't say it's the woman that must go to the shop. I do the shopping in my house. I can tell you we've been married 26 years, going to be 26 years. I've done, I, I, I do 99.9% .9 of shopping. Why? Not because of anything. It's just, I mean, I just enjoy doing it. My wife doesn't like any shopping, which is strange. The women like shopping, men don't like shopping. <laughs> Me, I do the other way. I can shop, I can buy everything. But my wife doesn't like shopping. And it's, we understand that. So I don't see it as, oh, why are you sending me to the market? No. I see it as something I, mm. I don't have a problem with it. I'm coming from work. You send me the list, I buy. And even though many times I'll buy the wrong one, buy this one, I'll buy the other, buy blue <laughs> color, buy red. So, <laughs> so, so but we've understood that. So it's understanding the way it works. So the issue mm. of resources, we must be careful because that's one of the marriage breakers. If you don't handle it carefully and properly, it can destroy your home. So yes. intelligence is critical. And it's one of the things that we need to teach. Not when we are getting into marriage. We wait until that time where we now find out hey, how much does the husband have? Does he have savings? Do uh -uh -uh. Let's teach it from young. People like mm. us, nobody talks about financial intelligence. We learned on the job and our fingers were burnt. We can teach mm. it now from primary school. Save. Mm -hmm. They give you money. Somebody gives you money. It's not to run to the shop. Put it somewhere. Mm. Save the money. Trade with the money. Go and buy something. Sell to your friends. Increase the money. We are teaching them how to raise resources for the future. So the mistakes we made, they won't make those make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Sure. Thank you. All right. Okay, no, okay so on, the next. Go ahead. Okay, all right. So the next question, sir, is about um, how do we prepare um, new fathers? All right. How do we prepare them for the challenges that comes with being a parent? Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. When we talk about preparing the 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 next generation, like I said, you see, we must start very early. Most times, we wait until somebody wants to. Maybe when they are getting to university and they are about to graduate. I remember those days when you now get to 500 level. We now begin to do marriage seminar. Uh, how to propose or how to <laughs> go to marriage committee. How to do this, how to do that. We are now trying to prepare better. We now have brothers fellowship and begin to teach you how to put tie on, how to dress, how to use a uh, roll on, you know, these kind of things. That's not when. <laughs> the brother is already formed. <laughs> It will take the grace of God for that man to change. We yes. must start very early. We must start with our young boys. We must get them to see themselves as responsible people. They must be responsible from when they are very young. There are so many things. There's something that I, I look at now, I say, I, I could have taught my sons. I didn't teach them then because I felt oh, they should know. They see me, something like that. And some of them now, I'm still with them. To get them to change some of those things, we will talk and talk and talk. Tomorrow they will do it again. I say, ah! And I remember that, no, it's not their fault. You didn't teach them on time. So exactly. thank God they're getting there gradually. But it is a battle. If you do, somebody made a statement. He says, uh, it's not even somebody, it's an adage. He says that it is in the morning 
that you bend palm front. When it is when the sun comes out and is dry, it will break. You need to mm. be mm -hmm. let's begin to teach them boys to begin to see themselves as as men. No, and how do we do it? They, 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 the aspect of they, they, they just come near a girl and punch a girl. We must stop it. It, it starts from there. They see it as yes. a joke. No, you mm. must carry yourself. A girl is coming. You you give way. You do, uh, we live in a society where they say no, it's feminist something. Don't don't give way for me. Don't open car door. Don't do this. You see, it is it is a level of foolishness that people have <laughs> fight. That is how a boy, a man treats a woman. You treat a woman with that's dignity. right. You treat a mm -hmm. woman right. So when they begin to think that way, they begin to see that I, I, I can't, I, I shouldn't take advantage of a sister. I shouldn't take advantage of a girl. No, you, 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 you we, we live in, in the society, in society, when we're in primary school, you sit down, you draw a line and say, if your hand patches, touch, passes this place, I will beat you. Why? Because she's a girl. And it was a lie. It was the fact that in those days, you like the girl and you just want to make it look as if you don't like her because you're afraid. So, and the, it was a mindset they were imbibing you that this is, you must treat you, the, the, the girl as lower than you. No. Mm -hmm. Treat a woman with dignity. Let's raise boys mm -hmm. at to see that, listen, a woman is a person of value. Somebody that needs to be taken care of, that needs to be cared for. And it's not because you want to, to marry her or anything. That's just natural things that you must learn. As we do it at a very early age, primary school, let's organize things like that in primary school. Let's organize it in secondary school. Let's not wait until they, they graduate. So, yeah, and it must be a value we've instilled in them, whether they are Christians or not. Let's instill mm -hmm. it in them. So if they are not Christians, they've learned it. If they are Christians, great. They, it becomes part of their DNA normally, but at least they grow with it. Praise the Lord. Thank you very okay. much. Sir. So, preparing <laughs> men to be fathers <laughs> have to start at childhood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and you can't be preparing your son to be a father and, you know, telling him how to treat a woman when you're not doing that to your wife. It, 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 so you're, it, you're, you're teaching what you are modeling in your life. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't be talking harshly to, the, to, the, to their mom and expect them to talk nicely Respect. to the woman. Exactly. It's, not, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I was, I, was, I, was, I was talking to somebody some few, uh, a, a while ago who were trying to have a chat with, with, a, with a couple. And the way the, the, the man was talking to his wife, in front of each i said no listen the way you are dealing you can't talk to your wife it doesn't matter what you, even if you are going to challenge your wife not in front of the children children no, you, mm. you, you can talk to your wife and you must learn to to hold your emotions because the screaming and shouting does not change anything you must you must you must talk with dignity even though you are angry you must hold anger and be able to 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 because you see the damage you are going to do in in a moment of one anger you don't know the reaction you don't you can't legislate what the other person would do and i mm. I, I learned that that listen you need to be soft spoken especially to your wife you might be angry you must learn to hold your emotions mm. let mm. hold it because many people think i'm not I'm, i can't be angry i used to think I, I used to be a very quiet person i thought so i thought i was very quiet until one day you know you, sometimes god will be looking at you and he will say ah, but I is very quiet until one day my wife we were we, we had our son and she said, take care of the boy. She had a meeting, a sister meeting, and we were in church. And then I and also somebody now called me. I forgot my son and I went to do something else. And she came back. He said, Where is our son? I said, wow. Where? I said, ah, but he was with you. He said, No. And before I knew it, I had my Bible in my hand. And somehow this was our son was our son who is going to be 25 now was just one. It wasn't even not up to one. one I think it was around one. And before I knew it, I just got angry. I just threw my Bible. I said, What do you mean? I was like, at the reception of the hall Church. we were using, the man at the reception looked at me. I looked at myself. Nobody else was there <laughs> except myself. And I looked at myself. I say, the only go say anger is in you. Mm. That was what me, and mm. I said, I say, it is true. There's anger. The opportunity to release anger didn't show up. That's why mm. I thought I, I had to go and pray. I say, God, you need to deliver me from this. Imagine mm. it could have been something else. Imagine if it was coffee that I had in my hand and I threw and the thing poured mm. on somebody. It, mm -hmm. could have that. it could have been that my wife was mm. in front of me and I threw the thing at her because I was trying to mm. say, I'm, I'm telling you this, but I 
an action came out that could have caused mm. untold damage. So we need to handle mm. it very well. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Um, something yeah. I picked from what you say is handling emotions. So today we had a conversation, I mean, during devotion. Thankfully, I was with my parents, you know, and some of my siblings who were around for Father's Day. And they were talking about how the society have said men shouldn't mm. cry or men don't cry. You said mm. something about handling your emotions. And I want to tie that part to handling pressure. So we know how the world is now. Nigeria is not the only one facing inflation, mm. either housing issues, petrol, price of school fees, everything is on the high. And to be honest, I was telling somebody recently that I don't know how people who are not born again are coping. <laughs> it takes the spirit of God to help you not to blow out when you even go across the street. You know, everybody on the edge. A simple, you know, talk with a taxi person or something like that, they'll be like, ah, they're already running courses. You know, mm -hmm. how are you shouting and ah, I do offend you now. Emma Binu, you know, <laughs> you're almost begging them because you want to keep it sane. So how can men who already have responsibilities cope with the pressure? There's a pressure from economy, and probably pressure at work. Maybe your boss you are not performing right. at your best, but you know you are putting your best. It's not just working. How can a man keep it all together, still be sane, handle his emotions, love his wife, and still lead the home with, with all of this good and safe? Amen. Yeah. You see, it, that, that question is, is a very heavy question because it has the reality of life. A man's, yes. a man's role or a father's role is not a small person's role. It's not something you go into because, you, you know, so I've had somebody say, somebody was making a statement some while ago. He said, oh, I need to marry because I don't want to born. And the reason so that I, I said, you don't understand. <laughs> you will, if it is because of that, you are going to get to a point where your wife will be there. You will look at her for the, for one week. You will not even have any desire to do anything. Not because you don't <laughs> want to. The issues that are confronting you is more than all those ones. So if it is because of sex that you want to marry, I pity you. You, you will discover that it is not... You think it is the one that you see in movie and all those ones that they show you in all those non nonsense places. Life in reality is not like that. It's not like that. So, there's so much more that is involved. So as a man, we must always default back to the grace of God. It is God that helps a man. Mm. Mm. Without the grace of God, there's enough to cause a man to implode. There's enough to cause a man to go mental. Is it the financial mm. side of things? Is it the emotional side of things? Is it the pressure from every side? Listen, you can be, a, people think, oh, well, because you're a pastor and you come and preach on Sunday, everything is okay. No, you have pressure, mm. pressure from ministry, pressure from brethren, <laughs> pressure mm. from leadership, pressure from leaders. If you are a father, pressure from home, you, you are an uncle. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the first of eight, or let me say a first of nine. So you can imagine pressure from that side. I, you, you got cousins you got people everybody is calling you left right and center because somebody needs something here and some people look at you and say ah you are abroad now ah, just ordinary you can't somebody send me one day says this i just finished writing the book uh, please uh, i've been looking at you uh, this and that uh, your own contribution is just two thousand pounds he wrote just <laughs> so when he said just two thousand pounds i look i say okay jesus <laughs> My wife, my wife said, eh, at least send 100 pounds. I said, out of how much? <laughs> if I say 100 pounds, that means I'm going one night. <laughs> Let's just move. <laughs> Let's, let me just move past this text because <laughs> there's nowhere to begin the discussion. Out of, he <laughs> said, just 2,000 pounds. That is hmm. pressure. Pressure from everywhere. Everybody thinks, ah, at least you should be able to send this one. And there's pressure from that side. Then there's ministerial hmm. pressure. Of having to meet up, something comes up in church as a leader. You need to be there. You can't say you are a leader. You are not at the forefront. There's pressure from there. So there's mm. pressure everywhere. You need the grace of God to be sane. You need the grace of God to even be able to stand up and continue to move. And you got your own secular mm. role, you know, your own your own job or business to also mm. succeed. And mm. then you also have 
more importantly, you need to stand as a believer to be able to make it at the end of your journey. You want to be able to, to stand before God and say, I finished my race. I finished my course. I have done all that you wanted me to do. Now, it takes God's grace to be able to do that. It takes God's grace. Mm. Because outside of that, <laughs> one will just wake up one morning and say, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm not even doing anything. I, I, people have said, I'm resigning from everything. I'm not even doing anything again. Why? I'm not, I'm not going to be a pastor. I don't even want to be a Christian again. Why? Because they felt God didn't show up. God mm. does not show up. God does not fail. Mm. So we need him. We need his direction. Mm. His direction is critical as well. Because without his direction, we will miss it. We will take steps mm. that, that can cripple us. So we need his grace more than ever before. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we have it. That to keep it all together, we need the grace of God. It, no matter the strategy, no matter the therapy, the place of God looking up to Father God for strength and direction cannot be overemphasized. I don't know how else, like our guests told us, how else we can cope without God. So if you're a man here, you're struggling, you're not having it easy, even if you're not married and a biological father yet, it is Father God that can help you. There is wisdom for each, to handle each situation, specific wisdom and instruction. Sometimes there's a temptation to take it out on your children, raise your voice, you know, at your wife, because things will always happen. Life is not always smooth. Mm. But if we keep going back to God, the one that called us, I mean, we didn't make yourself male. <laughs> he made you male. The one that said, you have chosen you to be a father. Tell him, oh, yeah, come, oh, come and handle this money. Don't pass me. You know, he wants, I, I believe God wants us to make a practice, a lifestyle of leaning on to him. Is a sign of believing in his strength and not just that we are strong on our own. I know that men want to be in charge, but remember that we cannot downplay the place of God in our lives as men. Okay, so I think I would call on our guest to give us his final closing remarks so that we can begin to wrap it up. I can't even believe we're almost one hour gone. I thought we we're just doing 30 minutes, but that's just how much I've enjoyed the conversation. Over to you, Daddy. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm um, just saying thank you for me. Uh, I'm, I'm so, so, so grateful for God giving us this opportunity. One of the things I want to say here, the issue, there's something you raised earlier about the aspect of emotions. Men mm. are allowed to cry. Men are mm. allowed to emotion because you are a human being. Yeah. And because you are a human, mm. there will be times when you would need to release what's inside of you. And this is where sometimes if you are a wife, you need to be there. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of humanity. It's a sign that you are human. And mm. we need to be there to know when a man is going through those seasons. And mm. to be there to support mm. them. To be there to see that they are able to go through that, that season. Many people have committed suicide because mm. they bottled too much and they couldn't hold it any longer. And there was nowhere to mm. be. Also, I want to encourage men, speak to people. Call somebody. Have somebody you can call. The person might not have money. Maybe you are going to a financial challenge. They don't have money, but they can give you words of encouragement. They can a sounding board, somebody you can release the tension to that will pray with you, that will also encourage you. There will be people that you will speak to and will give you insight. There will be things you are going through. It doesn't matter. Maybe you've messed up. And let me say that there are times when, as a man, you might have messed up. You've done something that is not supposed to be done. And the whole world will look like it's crashing in on you. Speak out find somebody to talk to i know you are going to talk to god but god has also placed men here on earth that you can right to. call mm. somebody and also you that you are going to be called it's not a public discussion it's for you that's right to provide protection to provide support except it's something let me talk from my from my side of um, the society now if it's a safeguarding issue <laughs> and it involves a police case Please, if you've had it, you know what to do. You can't mm -hmm. keep it to yourself if it involves a crime. But even if it involves a crime, you can still find a way to still support the individual 
Because for me, I tell people, listen, it doesn't matter what it ends at, even if it was something bad. At the end of the day, make sure your work with God remains intact. There's restoration. God can restore. Even if something evil has happened, he can restore. So please, young men, I want to encourage you. Know that God loves you. He's on your side. He will always hold you by your right hand if you give him your hand. That's why God says, mm -hmm. he calls us to walk with him. He says, give me your heart. Give God your heart. Give God everything. Lay it at his feet and let him. He, says, he, he said in Isaiah chapter 45, he says, unto Cyrus, whose right hand I'm holding to subdue nations. Let God hold your mm -hmm. right hand. Let God use you to subdue that circumstance and situation. Let God use that your case as a, as a test case to show men that God is able to deliver and to save. So God bless you as we celebrate Father's Day tomorrow. I want to celebrate all the fathers. I want to celebrate all the men who are standing right, who are standing and doing great things for God. And those of you who are still on the way, I want to encourage you, it's not over because mm -hmm. God has not ripped you off. You are a work in progress and you will surely come mm -hmm. shining brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, sir. Uh, for me, let's appreciate Apostle and tell them how they can join one giver so that we can wrap up. Over to you for me. All right. Um, first of all, I would like to say a big thank you, sir, for uh, coming. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for sparing out time out of your busy schedule to be here today. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And, um, you know, we have really done down a lot of things, a lot of nuggets that you have given us today that we are taking away. Um, and I believe strongly that lives will be transformed after listening to this session because it's, it Amen. was really, really mind blowing. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, on behalf of One Diva Global Community, thank you once again, sir. And anyone that wants to join the One Diva Global Community, you are free to join us. Just send us a DM to be part of us in the One Diva Global Community. It's for women. It's for women generally. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. All right. So One Diva Global Community is a community that's raising women as leaders. So from post-secondary school to motherhood, we have a ministry to single mothers, you know, any woman, wherever you have. If you have aunties, cousins, yeah. your wives, yeah, you can just join. Um, yes. <laughs> thank you sir send us a dm and you can join us uh we are more active on the, in our whatsapp communities and it's such a blessed conversation here uh we also have live conversations every saturday at 11 a.m on docs fm if you stay at lagos or around ogun state girl conversation happens on instagram every saturday at 5 p.m um, so we're coming up again next week Saturday. Okay, so thank you for joining us today and please uh, the the replay will be on Instagram. We'll also post it on YouTube. So please feel free to share with other people. Thank you so much sir, for honoring our invitation thank and you. happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. We thank appreciate you. you. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. All right, so from bye all bye. of us here today, bye. Bye, bye. bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank right. you. Thank you very much.